probably the main reason for, uh, there's probably two main reasons, two big reasons. One was uh, that I just needed something to do. I, I just, I, I get bored really fast and uh, I like working with my hands. Uh, that's what I did all my life. I retired at 55. Uh, we started a business. Uh, it just wasn't uh, what I needed. It wasn't what I, I needed something to, to grab a hold of, something tangible. And uh, I thought about doing something, but then I'd had, I had some back surgeries. I had two new knees replaced and all these things was, was, a, was a hold up along the way. And then I had an old friend of mine, Brian Wilson. Uh, he's an old sailor from way back. Brian's now 93 years old, I think. Uh, he just christened a boat this past summer, this boat. And uh, he had a big interest in stern wheelers. He actually had a group of kids that he taught when he was young, and they built a small wooden stern wheeler. And I thought, uh, that might be something I'd enjoy doing. And uh, I had a little room out back of our business in the alley, and I thought at first we'd just build something maybe small, you just uh, putter around on the river, and, and, uh, and then it just kind of grew as time went by. And I'd ask someone a question and they would say, uh, you, know, you need to build, you know, there's a, there's a reference that you need to be two and a half times the, the width in length uh, as, uh, as you, of your width uh, in order to make it steerable and things like that. And then Brian, would, the Brian Wilson, this gentleman, would come down and, and uh, we'd talk about it and we'd do drawings. And then we finally got it started. And uh, as it progressed, it just got bigger and bigger. And, and uh, Brian was with me most of the whole, the whole entire time until he took sick. Uh, once he got sick, then we'd take pictures up to him and I'd call him when he was capable of talking on the phone. So that's, that's how it got started and that's how it kind of grew as time went by. <sighs> Materials for the boat basically was, I had to use steel. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I wasn't capable of using wood and, and I, you wouldn't want to build a stern wheeler out of wood these days, even though it's possible, but steel was what I grew up with. I, I, I work with steel like some people work with, you know, wood. Uh, it's easy for me and that was my past experience, so I, I thought steel would, would be the, the best. And as far as design, like I said before, you know, it, that the design really wasn't there in the beginning. It just kind of grew as time went by. Uh, sometimes you you add a little something to it because you don't want to waste metal. So you add a couple feet here, a couple feet there. So it just kind of grows. Um, I, I I really enjoyed the whole entire experience. I I did some things like the the depth of the hall. I had to make it deeper because my knees wouldn't allow me to work on on my knees down in in a hall like that. Uh, so there are certain things I had to do that that were necessary because of my my health or the way I have to work, you know, with the knee problems and the back problems and things like that. So yeah, uh, hall design is uh, probably the key to everything. You you really don't uh, you, you you don't see anything above the top deck until you've got the design of the uh, uh, your, your your hull and of course being steel you've got the weight there but there's so much buoyancy in displacement of water that you have to calculate do a lot of calculations and like I said your, your length is because of your width you know you two and a half times your, uh, your width to get length still doesn't tell you the weight that you're going to have in the in the aft section because of the motor and the wheel and uh, uh, your buckets and all of that so you have to decide where you're going to put your top deck uh, eventually and then try to use some of that in in your design as to how how to run the uh, the keel and and uh, the, the sides of the boat how it's going to cut through the water things like that uh, in the beginning I, I wanted to use a scow bow up front which is just a 22 and a half degree uh, flat uh, semi flat front end and uh, as time went went on I realized that I was had too much half weight and I needed to do something that was going to cut the water a little bit in the front and extend it to get a little more metal to the front a little more weight so I decided to go with a model bow that helped a little bit uh, and then 
as you build, of course, you have to make it structurally sound. So uh, about every 18 inches, there is a grid of two by two by quarter inch angle throughout the whole entire hull, all the way back. And then you have four watertight compartments with a bulkhead in between those. So you have three bulkheads, which make, makes uh, four watertight compartments. Uh, if you'd happen to flood one, you're, you're good on the others. This boat is, uh, by being uh, 47 inches deep, uh, 14 foot wide, I'm good. The whole entire the hull is good for 55 ton. I weigh probably 30 ton, so I'm good for another 35 ton before the water would get to the top of the deck. So uh, it's, it's substantial uh, in its buoyancy. And then again, you have to make sure you have enough ballast in it to hold that down in the water because everything you add from the top deck up creates movement at the top. So you have to, you have, to do, have that in consideration. What I use, at, I had thought about using water, but water takes up so much room, I use concrete. And I use con the old concrete blocks and filled the pores full of concrete, which gives me, the older, older blocks are heavier than the new blocks gives me between 75 to not I've seen some as high as 90 pounds once they're full so uh, once I figured that out and knew about where my balance was going to be then I started bringing those inside the hall I've got uh, anywhere between five and six ton of ballast most of it is forward uh, and uh, that tend to work out pretty good I still wanted a little bit of lift in the front uh, so it, it goes into the water a little bit a little bit simpler but the hull is absolutely the key to everything there's no doubt about it and once you've got that and you've got your semi balanced out then you can start with the upper decks and as the upper decks progress you could change the ballast accordingly powering the boat is probably second most essential thing to, to think about uh, a paddle boat, really with a flat hull, whether you're running a scow bow or a model bow, it really doesn't take that much power. Uh, I could probably run this boat 45, maybe 50 horse uh, on its worst day. You have to think more on, uh, in the vein of torque than anything else. Uh, you can put uh, any small motor in it and it'll run, but when it gets under a lot of pressure, if you're going upstream and it's been a lot of rain or things like you got to think about the torque that's against that motor. I decided on a Cummings diesel. I've got a 4BT Cummings diesel, 105 horse. Uh, it's not so much the horsepower, like I said, you don't need that much, but it's got great torque, low torque. It's got, it's got a uh, 400 turbo hydromatic transmission. Uh, and, and of course you're running off torque converter off that transmission so it's not you don't have metal against metal it's all fluid action which makes a big difference so uh, when when the, the boat gets under a lot of pressure I have uh, I don't have any worries at all that I've got enough torque on that motor to turn that wheel I also have a 30 to 1 gear reduction uh, the, the motor runs at about 800 rpms at idle uh, I need about uh, 900 to a thousand RPMs to get my RPMs on the uh, on 900 to a thousand RPMs on the motor to get the, the required RPMs on the wheel. So uh, I come off of the, the motor at, at a thousand, I go back to the gear reduction which is 30 to 1, time I get back to the, you know, come off a 120 chain to a 140 chain back to the, the wheel with a 32 inch sprocket. When I'm down, it's nice and quiet, it's, it's soft, but it's got so much torque behind it that nothing's going to stop it. I mean, uh, I would tear the buckets off of it. If I got something caught in it, it would rip every bucket off of it before it would stop. Uh, if I get something really big in it, I, I run uh, six belts, six pulley belts, and that will give me some slippage in that. But even those, uh, they're tight enough to where it would take an off something awful big to, to slow it down enough to where those would those would start slipping. So, uh, got plenty of motor, plenty of gear reduction, and plenty of wheel to keep it going. Well, uh, with the the wheel, probably third in line is uh, to me haul first motor gear reduction second wheel third I think I could run this boat on maybe any design of wheel that you wanted to put on it 
because you have the the hull structured such a way, the gear reduction in the in the horsepower in such a way that anything spinning back there it's going to move this boat, but it won't move it efficiently. So that being third in line doesn't mean that it's not that important. So from what I've understood and what I've read and people that I've talked to over time, uh, a taller wheel uh, allows you speed. A wider wheel, wider than it is tall, uh, gives you more power. Well, in a, in a paddle wheeler, you're not really looking to push barges and things like that. So you're looking more towards speed than you are power. So you want a taller wheel than it is wide. Uh, I decided on eight foot. Most wheels are approximately eight foot, unless you get into the extremely large boats, then they go a little bit wider. But eight foot's the standard for for a, a paddles or for buckets. Uh, so I decided on eight foot. And I first started. I built. Uh, actually, I built started this boat building the paddle wheels, and frame, and and the gas and a diesel tank, just to see if I would enjoy it. I enjoyed it, so I continued. But back to the wheel, uh, I first was eight foot, and uh, and then when I got a little more knowledge about it, I watched it turn. I watched the revolutions and saw how much how much better it would probably do. And then after looking at other boats that had much more speed uh, by having a taller wheel, I went ahead and, and changed it over to uh, eight, uh, 10 foot. So I'm eight foot wide and 10 foot tall. Um, it probably is a hard thing to judge until once you've got it on the water. And then it all depends on how many buckets that you have on it. Buckets are the paddles. Uh, people that have stern wheelers or paddle wheelers call them buckets. Um, I started out with 10 buckets. Probably was a mistake. Probably should have went to 12. The rule of thumb is height plus 2. I'm 10 foot, so it should have been 12 paddles. I had, saw, seen, uh, had seen other boats that were, that were working perfectly well with 10. I thought that would, would suffice. But I'm still in the process of thinking, well, I'm, I'm good with it or I'm not good with it. I'm actually setting up now and have set up for intermediate buckets that's going to give me 20. Uh, they don't have the size of the buckets as I have wanted already. They're half that size, but I've tried them one time, but I've changed the height of my wheel. I'm going to put them back on. Once, now that I've got the wheel at the correct height, I'm going to put them back on and take another run and see if that works out. If it does, then I'll be, instead of a 10 buckets, I'll be 20. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. Yeah, yeah, Connie's had a big part. She's, uh, she's been the uh, timekeeper, the, uh, the banker, uh, the person that cleans up. She's done just about everything that I didn't want to do. Uh, at first, uh, and when she, she understood that I wanted to do this to have something to do and it was going to be a small project, she was perfectly fine with that. Uh, not that she wanted to be on a boat. She, she didn't really... I didn't get the impression that she was that she wanted to be on this boat for the longest time, and and uh, I think rightfully so. I don't think she wanted to be on it, but she was happy that I was working on it, and and I'd have something to do every day, and I'd come in, and I felt good in the evenings, and and uh, and it kept me busy, maybe out of her hair more than anything else. So it was okay for a while, and then I think gradually when she saw that it was actually going to come to fruition, we were going to get this big thing on the water. It she was scared, and. Uh, and so it took a while to get her actually on it. I mean, even setting along the bank, it took her a while. And then once she got on it, and then because uh, she, she had been a, a, a major part of uh, uh, all the inside, you know, she she had a lot to do with the design on the inside. And I tried to stay with that, to, you know, to keep a happy home going all at the same time. And then once she got to feel that, she got on a boat, and she actually took a little ride on it. And then it became something she really enjoyed then. And now she's the one that wants to get on. I'm happy to be uh, along the bank and tinkering with it, uh, you know, fixing this and changing that. And I see something I like to change, or, and it gives me something physically to do. And I enjoy that, but she'd rather get on it and take off somewhere. So uh, she's, uh, I don't know whether that's, uh, you know, you create that proverbial monster, you know, that didn't want to do it then, and now she wants to do it all the time. But uh, she's a lot of fun to be on it. She's become a really good deckhand. And uh, uh, when we when we built this, uh, we we don't have a dock. We still don't have a dock. But and, and I didn't know how I was going to 
uh, set it uh, against the banks, you know, because uh, the other boat's coming up and they'll beach against the bank. So I decided to put spuds on. We've got spuds on all four corners. But I can't control all four spuds. I can control the front too. I have to have someone in the back to control the back too. You have to know how the boat's drifting. You know, have to know how fast it's drifting. You have to know how deep the, the water is at that point, when to drop the spud. So it, there was a lot of things to know and, and uh, she has learned them all. Uh, and she knows exactly when to drop the spud. She knows how fast the boat's moving and you know the appropriate time in order to reach the amount of distance below the hull to where the spud's going to take to keep us from going in against the rocks, things like that. It's, it's not something you learn overnight and uh, she's, she's gotten really uh, good at that, at doing that. Uh, she's not much on, the, on, the, on mopping the deck yet, but I'm working on that. Uh, but no, she, she's turned out to be a great, a great deck hand. Uh, first mate more, more than anything else uh, and she probably knows as much about the running of this thing other than the the, uh, the gears and things like that she knows as much about this as I do and in the beginning I, I, I wanted someone else to go with us all because I thought that man you know out there would would do it uh, if she couldn't and now I'd rather have her than than any guy because I know she knows how to do it Yeah, the name. That that was probably that was another one of those things that went on for the longest time. We had uh, Parlor City Queen. We had uh, Parlor City. There was several names. Uh, I even thought about Clyde, uh, which was my dad's name, or the Mildred V, which was my mom's name. <clears throat> but they'd come and go, and uh, there was another Clyde, and I don't know. It, it just didn't seem right, and uh, so I, uh, you know. It, it, Typically, most boats are named after the wives. And of course, Connie being, and her middle name is Connie A. And uh, I wasn't really hot on the idea either, but I thought, it, I make it her choice, you know. So I asked her about it, and she's never been, never liked that, never cared for that. I don't know whether it's just that she just didn't want her to see her name up on there, maybe, because she's a very low, low key person. And, uh, and I could understand that. So, uh, we went on for a while again, and then uh, when when we get up in the morning, I'm always up early, and I make coffee, and I have everything ready for her. When she gets up in the morning, uh, for years and years and years, I can't remember how far back, but I've always said morning glory, and uh, and of course she's you know that's what we've we've done forever, and uh, I said, uh, well, how about morning glory? And she said. That's fine. That's perfect. Name. It associates it with her. Between her and I, we know that's her. Uh, but yet, it's not the Connie A up there on that thing. It's Morning Glory. And then, uh, so we just we decided on the Morning Glory, or just Morning Glory. And then uh, we got to thinking about it. And that was my dad's favorite flower his whole entire life. And so they kind of every kind of everything kind of goes together, which uh, worked out pretty good. So we were happy with that. And that's that's how it ended up the Morning Glory. Uh, history on a boat is 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 everything. Uh, when people buy a boat or the, they want to get a boat that someone else built, they want that history. And when you build something, and I think every person has that same feeling deep down, you want that history to go along with it also. Uh, it's, it's not being conceited, it's just you want part of you to go along with it, part of you know, your blood, sweat, and tears literally in something like this and your time, all the time and effort that went into it. Uh, you'd like that to go along. And for me, I don't know, I, I just, I'd like someone to know that it was, it started out being something to do, and then it became like another child or almost of yours and you're trying to nurture, you're trying to, to make it the best you possibly can. And when you get to that point and you take it out on the river, it's like turning them loose uh, for the first time. If it works well, you think, oh, I did a great job. If it doesn't work so well, you think, eh, maybe I should have done something different, uh, just like a child. Uh, so it, it's almost like a child. It's almost like uh, one of your uh, a blood relatives of some kind. Uh, you've coaxed it along. You've... you've done things to make, to, to make it better and then you turn it loose and I think that's what the selling part of it be or wh whatever happens to it later on it's kind of like uh, letting one of your kids not selling one of your kids but allowing one of your kids to move on 
And uh, that's that's about all I'd like them to know. That it was it started out being something to do. It ended up being a labor of love. <laughs> oh, you want the truth, right? You really want the truth? Uh, I don't know. I probably will move on to another boat. I probably will. I, I, I love the boat. Don't get me wrong. I really do. But I'm still, I still have the want to do something else. When, when this runs dry, when, when everything here is at the point where I don't, I don't have the want to change something else if I'm satisfied with it. Because you'll get to the point where you are satisfied. When I get to the point I'm satisfied, I have to move on. And if I'm physically capable, I'll probably move on to another boat. I like boats. I really enjoy it. I love this. This is so much fun. Building something you put on the water and you don't have a stop sign out here somewhere, you know, telling you to stop and wait on the next guy to come through. It's so totally different. So um, it's so, uh, I'm so, it's alien, completely alien when I first started. And uh, so I like that aspect of it. But I like to do something different. I like to maybe small tugboat, something you know, completely different than paddles on the back. Something that's got a, a, a you know, a, 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 that's going to go through the hall. You know, uh, so I think that that would be different. It it allows me to use some of the things that I've learned on here. I still maintain my ability to weld and use metal and things like that, which uh, which I enjoy. And then maybe just change change the style. Uh, if I'm if I if I'm capable, I'd like to try that. Uh, we had first decided we thought we'd wanted to go down to uh, uh, down to ten towards Tennessee where they they tied the Tennessee River into the Ohio back this side of the Mississippi, and then go down to uh, Pensacola, Florida, and pull up into the bay. And we we may still do that. I don't know. I, I got Connie. She's been talked into doing just that for probably the last year. So if uh, things don't work out the other way, we may take it off take off and go down that way. I do have uh, uh, paint on the bottom of the hull that, that's good for salt water, so if we, if we make that choice, it'll be ready. Yeah, I think you, you have to be satisfied at the end of every day or you don't come back the next day. That's that's the way I am. If I if I can't be if I can't get some kind of satisfaction of what I've done that day before, then I don't want to come back. So I try I try not to over. <clears throat> I try not to allow myself to say I'm going to get this much done today and go too far. I've learned to keep it in small um, increments. And uh, at the end of the day, if I've got that done, if I'm close to having that done, or if I can see that being accomplished by the next morning soon, then I'm happy with it. I'm okay. Uh, but I, at, at the same time, when I'm leaving to get into the truck, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, and I'm always looking forward to coming back tomorrow.